All right, welcome to Celebration Online. My name is Stephen. As always, want to say thank you so much for joining in with us. Hey, where are you watching from? Let us know in a chat if you're watching our premiere service. We got a great service planned. As always, got worship time, and we're about to have in a second have a time to give. We're going to hear an incredible word today. God's been doing some incredible things here at Celebration Church over these past week. We've seen over 100 people get baptized. Last week, we saw over 200 people. Take the step to get connected to a life group. And if you haven't made the decision in those two areas, I want to let you know it's not too late. You can still connect with us at online at celebrationchurch.org. Let us know if you want to get baptized. Let us know if you want to get connected to a life group. Make sure you share this service as we're about to kick off and worship together. Let's pray. Father, we thank you so much for the opportunity, as always, to do this, to come together from all over the the city, the state, and the world, Father, for one purpose, which is to glorify your name, Father. I pray that whatever situation that we're in right now, that you'd meet us right there today. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's worship. promises time and time again you have proven you just what you said though the storms may come and the winds may blow I'll remain steadfast and let my heart learn when you speak a word it will come to
Well, God is indeed faithful. Thank you so much for joining us here at Celebration Online. My name is Stephen, and we're so glad that you took the time to worship with us today and to lean into an incredible message. You know how we do it here at Celebration Online. We want to give you an opportunity to continue to worship right now by giving of your tithes and your offerings. And as always, I want to say thank you so much for doing that, because when you give, you make ministries like this and other ministries possible. As I said, as we kicked off our service, we had over 100 people get baptized two weeks ago. We have uh, over 200 people that chose to get connected to a life group and all of those things are taking place across all of our campuses but even here at celebration online because of your faithful giving so thank you so much for doing that there's two ways you can do that here at celebration online you go to celebrationchurch.org slash give uh, that's the way that i love to give my family likes to give because you can set up reoccurring giving uh, the second way to do it is go to webcc.info click on the give now tab and that you can give right there it only takes a couple seconds to do that and you can do it from your smartphone i want to encourage you to look into one of those two options today and i want to encourage you if you if you're not giving I want to encourage you to give something. If you are giving something, I want to encourage you to stretch your faith and give a little more so that God can show you how faithful. He's been so faithful to you and I. Let's go ahead and be faithful to him and give back to him. Now, hey, look, today, Pastor Dennis Watson is here at Celebration Online. We're diving into Exodus chapter 19. I want to encourage you, go ahead, open up your smartphone, open up a new tab, webcc.info, open up your Bible if you got one by you, and let's lean into this incredible message from Pastor Dennis Watson. I want to join Pastor Stephen and welcome you here today. We're so glad that you've joined us today for Celebration Online. And I want to encourage you to take your Bible or Bible app and turn with me to Exodus chapter 19, the Old Testament book of Exodus and the 19th chapter. I want to remind you again, there's a study guide at webcc.info that will help you to follow along with today's message. Let me ask you a question as you're finding that scripture passage. The question is, do you have a dream or vision for your life? Do you have a dream or vision for your life? And if you do, what is that dream or vision that you have for your life? Helen Keller was a noted author who was born blind, deaf, and mute. And she once said, the only thing worse than being blind is having sight but having no vision for your life. You know, the Bible echoes that sentiment. It says in Proverbs chapter 29, verse 18, where there is no vision, people perish. The New Living Translation of that verse says, where there is no revelation, divine revelation, the people cast off restraint. And the message paraphrase of that verse says, if people can't see what God is doing, they stumble all over themselves. But when they attend to what he reveals, they are most blessed. If you want to be most blessed in your life, find out what God's dreams and God's plans are for your life. Uh, so ask yourself this question. What, are you, what, are, what am I passionate about? What really motivates you in life? And how do I want to bless the world? And in the process, as you begin to pursue and seek God's will and God's way, God's dreams and vision and plan for your life, I'm telling you, you'll begin to experience the blessed life that God wants you to experience. Now, to experience God's best in our lives, in our church, we've got to find and fulfill God's vision and plans for our lives. We want to learn about how to do that today from today's scripture passage in Exodus chapter 19. You follow along as I read. The Bible says in verse 1, exactly two months after the Israelites left Egypt, they arrived in the wilderness of Sinai. After breaking camp at Rephidim, they came to the wilderness of Sinai and set up camp there at the base of Mount Sinai. Then Moses climbed the mountain to appear before God. The Lord called to him from the mountain and said, Give these instructions to the family of Jacob. Announce it to the descendants of Israel. You have seen what I did to the Egyptians. You know how I carried you on eagles' wings and brought you to myself. Now, if you will obey me and keep my covenant, you will be my own special treasure from among all the peoples on earth, for all the earth belongs to me, says the Lord. And you'll be my kingdom of priests, my holy nation. This is the message you must give to the people of Israel. So Moses returned from the mountain and called together the elders of the people and told them everything the Lord had commanded him. And all the people responded together, we will do everything the Lord has commanded. And so Moses brought the people's answer back to the Lord. Now, we've been learning about this journey of the Israelites as they came from captivity in Egypt and made it through the Red Sea and traveled across the wilderness until they came here to Mount Sinai in the wilderness of Sinai. And we've learned from the study of the book of Exodus that God orchestrated all the circumstances surrounding the Israelites' departure from Egypt and the miracles along their journey. He did all that so he could bring them to this place where they could experience his presence in new and profound ways and where they could learn about his great plans and purposes they had that he had for their lives. In fact, in our scripture passage, in Exodus 19.6, the Lord said, 
uh, to Israel, and you will be my kingdom of priests, and you will be my holy nation. In other words, God was saying, I've not just called you to be a tribe, I've not just called you to be a people, but I've called you to be my kingdom of priests and my holy people, so I can not only bless you, but I can use you to bless the people around you, so I can use you to bless the world. It reminds us that God has also orchestrated the circumstances of our lives so that we can experience his presence in more powerful ways than we've ever experienced and so we can understand the vision and plans that he has for our lives. But what I've discovered is a lot of people don't even know why they are, uh, why they, why they are where they are or what they're called to do or what God's plans and purposes are for their lives. I love to tell the story of Herman and Henrietta who got married and Henrietta had all the money and, and uh, she didn't mind reminding Herman that she had all the money. One day they invited some friends over to see a new house they had purchased, and Henrietta said to the friends, if it wasn't for money, my money, this house wouldn't be here. They invited some friends later on to see the, the furniture that they bought for the house, and again, Henrietta said, you know, if it wasn't for my money, this furniture wouldn't be here. They bought a car together and invited some friends over to see the car, and again, Henrietta said, if it wasn't for my money, this car wouldn't be here. Well, Herman could take it no longer, so he said to Henrietta in front of the friends, listen, Henrietta, if it wasn't for your money, I wouldn't be here. You ever ask yourself, why am I here? What's my purpose on planet Earth? I don't know the answer to that question specifically for you, but here's what I do know. God has great plans and purposes for your life. He wants you to discover those plans and purposes and begin to fulfill them in your life. The Bible says God calls us everything to work together for the good of those who love God and who are called according to his purposes for them. In other words, God will bless through every circumstance and situation if we're just focused on finding and fulfilling his purposes for our lives. So here's a question today. What has God called us to be? And what has God called us to do in our day and time? That's the question I want you to think about as we unpack Exodus 19. But we also want to think about the question, what steps can we take to discover God's purposes and plans for our lives? To begin with, to discover God's direction for our lives, we need to focus on meeting with him privately and meeting with him corporately. Take you back to the first part of Exodus 19. The Bible says in verse 1 and following, exactly two months after the Israelites left Egypt, they arrived in the wilderness of Sinai. And after breaking camp at Rephidim, they came to the wilderness of Sinai and set up camp there at the base of Mount Sinai. And then Moses climbed up the mountain to meet with God. He climbed up the mountain to appear to God. Now, this is the same mountain where sometime before God had told Moses that he would lead the Israelite people to after they had been freed from Egyptian captivity. Remember back in Exodus chapter 3, Moses was just a shepherd of over sheep in the backside of the desert. But he saw a bush that was burning on the mountain, the Mount Sinai, that was not consumed even though it was burning. And he went there to the bush, and the Lord told him, take off your shoes, this is holy ground. And God spoke to him that day and told him that he was going to be the one who led the people of God out of captivity in Egypt and led them to the promised land. Uh, he told him about this, and Moses, the Bible says in Exodus 3, and 11 and 12, Moses protested to God, who am I to appear before Pharaoh? Who am I to lead the people of Israel out of Egypt? And God answered, I will be with you, which, by the way, that's enough for us to hear. God said, I will be with you, and this is your sign that I'm the one who sent you. When you brought the people out of Egypt, you will worship God at this very mountain. And in our passage of Scripture today in Exodus 19, we find that prophecy from the Lord being fulfilled in Moses' life and in the life of the Israelites as well. Now, let's think about Moses' encounter with the Lord, first at the burning bush, and then at the Mount Sinai in Exodus chapter 19. You see, those, both of those occasions reminds us that God often uses times of private and public worship to reveal his vision and will for our lives. God revealed his vision for Moses and the Israelites, uh, to how Moses would lead the Israelites out of Egypt in a private meeting at the burning bush. But now that Moses was back at the same mountain where he had that first encounter with the Lord, uh, God is revealing in a public way his vision for the Israelites, his vision and call for them to become a holy nation that would bless the earth. See, Moses' private and public encounters with the Lord reminds us that the Lord uses our worship times with him, whether they're in person or whether they're in private or whether they're public. He uses those times to reveal his purposes and plans to reveal his will and way for our life. Now, worship, as you know, is not just about singing to the Lord. It's a great way to worship, and we're glad that you joined us early, uh, earlier for that time of worship in the Lord. Uh, but you can actually worship the Lord every day of your life through the ordinary, everyday activities of your life. But as you do, as you focus your life on worshiping the Lord, uh, you'll be better attuned to the voice of the Lord and better able to hear his will for your life. 
The Apostle Paul wrote these words. He said in Romans chapter 12, 1 and 2, Dear brothers and sisters, I plead with you to give your bodies to God because of all he's done for you. Let them be a holy, uh, living and holy sacrifice, the kind he will find acceptable. This is truly the way to worship him. Don't copy the behavior and customs of the world, but let God transform you into a new person by changing the way that you think. Then you will learn to know God's will for you. Then you will learn to know God's will for you, which is good and pleasing and perfect. In other words, as you spend time every day focused on the Lord and worshiping the Lord, it might be getting up and turning on Christian music. It, it might be reading your Bible. It might be praying to the Lord. It could be some other thing. But as you focus your time on worshiping the Lord, you, you, your, ears are better, your, your mind and ears are better able to hear the voice of the Lord, and you're better able to know the will of the Lord for your life. Oftentimes it happens in worship settings when we're focused on worshiping the Lord. What happened to me in the early days of being a Christian? You know, when the Lord saved me, he delivered me from a lifestyle of drugs and alcohol and all kinds of ungodliness in my life. And I started preaching right away, and not because I knew a lot about the Bible, but because my testimony was so dramatic that lots of churches wanted to hear my testimony. And people would say to me, I think God's calling you to be a pastor or a preacher. And I'm like, oh, no, God's not called me to be a pastor or a preacher. I've made too many mistakes in my life. I've had too many problems in my life. In fact, I, I was going to—I was focused on becoming a successful businessman, and I began to negotiate with the Lord. I, Lord, I said to the Lord, "Lord, I don't want to be a pastor. If you don't make me be a pastor, I'll give twenty percent, not ten percent. I'll give twenty percent of my income to you." I negotiated even more. Lord, if you don't call me to be a pastor, I'll give twenty-five percent of my income to you. I remember saying to the Lord one time, "Lord, if you don't make me be a pastor, I'll give thirty-three percent, one third of my income to you. I want to do anything and everything but be a pastor." One day in Tallahassee, Florida, I was at a service where a guy named David Ring was speaking. David Ring has cerebral palsy, but he, at that time, was one of the premier evangelists in our nation. And David Ring said during that sermon, he said, if I don't have any excuse for not serving God, what's your excuse? And I didn't even wait for the altar call. I started the altar call, went to the front and fell at the altar and said, Lord, I heard your voice. I'm surrendering to you. I'll be who you've called me to be. I'll do what you've called me to do. I'll go where you've called me to go. Because God has spoken to me very clearly in that worship experience. And the same God who spoke to Moses at the burning bush and on Mount Sinai, and the same God who spoke to me will speak to you as well, but he's more apt to speak to you when you're, fo- when you're attending worship services or focusing your life on worshiping the Lord. So to discover God's direction for our lives, we need to focus on meeting with him personally and corporately. Here's the second thing. To discover God's direction for our lives, we need to focus on remembering who he is to us and what he has done for us. Now, in our Bible passage, God reminded the Israelites of who he was and what he had done for them. In verse 4, the Lord said, You have seen what I did to the Egyptians. You know how I carried you on eagles' wings and brought you to myself. Now, the Lord was reminding the Israelites there of how he had liberated them from Egyptian captivity, how he had rescued them in a miraculous way uh, through the Red Sea crossing. He was reminding them of how he turned bitter waters at Merah into sweet waters, how he had rained down doves and manna from heaven when they needed food, how he brought rock, uh, water from a rock and Rephidim and protected them from the Amalekites. He was reminding them of all he had done. And let me tell you, being reminded of what God has done oftentimes enables us to trust the Lord more so that we will believe he has great plans and purposes for our lives. God uses our reflection on who he is and what he has done, oftentimes, to increase our faith in him. Well, how does this happen? Well, our confidence in the Lord is increased when we constantly reflect on who the Lord is to us. I, I found that reflecting on the Lord really helps us to keep things in perspective. Whenever we're frightened, whenever we're overwhelmed, we should spend time thinking about the names and attributes and characteristics of the Lord And then remember, it's the same God who loves us so much, and it's the same God who has great plans and purposes for our lives. Now, when my children were little, we used to to watch and listen to videos called the Veggie Tales. I don't know if anyone's familiar with the Veggie Tales. One of my favorite ones went like this. So when I'm lying in my bed and the furniture starts creeping, I'll just laugh and say, hey, cut that out and get back to my sleeping, because I know that God's the biggest, and he's watching all the while. So when I get scared, I'll think of him and close my eyes and smile because God is bigger than the boogeyman. He's bigger than Godzilla or the monsters on TV. God is bigger than the boogeyman, and he's watching out for you, and he's watching out for me. That's a fun children's song, but it helps to remind us of how big our God is and how when we focus on him, 
I mean, all the obstacles and the opposition just sort of fade away. We do the same when we read Psalm 24. The Psalm 24 says, The earth is the Lord's and everything in it, the world and all the people belong to him. For he laid the earth's foundation on the seas and built it on the ocean depths. Open up ancient gates, open up ancient doors, and let the king of glory enter. Who is the king of glory? He's the Lord strong and mighty, the Lord invincible in battle. Who is the king of glory? He's the Lord of heaven's armies. He's the king of glory. Can you just feel your faith increase as you read about who God is? And what he's able to do because of his might and power and glory. Our confidence in the Lord is increased when we reflect on who the Lord is, but also when we recollect or remember what the Lord has done for us. Now, uh, focusing on who the Lord is changes our perspective, but remembering what the Lord has done can change our attitude. Look what it says in Psalm 77. This is a psalm of a man by the name of Asaph, and he said, This is my fate. The Most High has turned his hand against me. I mean, he's negative, he's discouraged. But then I recall all you have done, O Lord. I remember your wonderful deeds of long ago. They are constantly in my thoughts. I cannot stop thinking about your mighty works. And here was a man who was discouraged, overwhelmed, overcome by the obstacles and opposition he experienced in life. But he said, the more I think about you, God, and what you've done, the more encouraged I am in my life. So I tell people, man, you just got to keep your focus on the Lord, on who he is to you and what he's done for you. Get up early in the morning again. And turn on some Christian music. Uh, get out your Bible and read. Uh, write down, do some journaling. Write down what the Lord has done for you. Reflect on what the Lord has done for you in your life. An old hymn says, uh, count your many blessings, name them one by one, and it will surprise you what the Lord has done. You see, reflecting on who the Lord is to us and what he's done for us reminds us that he will be faithful to us as we pursue fulfilling his vision and plans for our lives. One of my favorite verses is Philippians 1, 6, which says, I am certain that God, who began the good work within you, will continue his work until it is finally finished on the day when Christ Jesus returns. In other words, God's going to carry out his plan if we'll stay focused on him in our lives. Here's the third thing, to discover God's direction for our lives. We need to focus on obeying and living by his word. Now, when Moses was in the Lord's presence, the Lord instructed him to say these words to the Israelites. The Lord said in, in Exodus 19, 5, If you will obey me and keep my covenant, you will be my own special treasure from among all the peoples on earth, for all the earth belongs to me. And what a great promise that is from the Lord. It was his desire for the Israelites to be his own special treasure above all the other nations of the earth. What a great honor. All they had to do was all they had to do was obey and live for the Lord. But when you read the Bible, you'll discover that the Israelites continually had trouble with obeying and living for the Lord. Obedience wasn't popular with them, just like it's not really popular with many children and teenagers today. One man said there are three ways to get something done. Number one, do it yourself. Number two, hire someone to do it. Number three, tell your children not to do it, and then they're likely to do it. To be honest, obeying the Lord is not popular with adults either. People have had issues with obedience as long as there have been human beings on planet Earth. I've struggled with obedience. You've struggled with obedience. We've all struggled with obedience. I mean, go back to the beginning of time. There was Adam and Eve. What an incredible scenario, situation. They were, they, God had them living in a beautiful garden. They were surrounded by luscious fruit and friendly animals and all those kinds of things. Think about this. Adam never had to hear from Eve about whom she could have married. Eve never had to hear from Adam about how well his mother cooked. I mean, what a perfect situation. God said, all this is yours. Just don't touch this fruit of this tree. But they couldn't refrain from disobeying the Lord. They couldn't refrain. They couldn't take their focus on obeying the Lord. Now, a lot of people... Say, I'm going to obey the Lord because they're afraid of being punished. And let me tell you, there are repercussions that come to us when we disobey the Lord. But the, my primary purpose on obeying the Lord is not so we can avoid punishment, but so we can experience God's greatest of blessings in our lives. When we obey and live by God's word, the Bible says the Lord guides us and provides for us and helps us to fulfill his vision and plans for our lives. What I'm saying is that obedience paves the way for God's best in our lives. The psalmist wrote the following words in Psalm 119. I have refused to walk on any evil path so that I may remain obedient to your word. Your commandments give me understanding. No wonder I hate every false way of life because your word is a lamp to guide my feet and your word is a light to guide my path. In other words, if you'll just stay focused on the word and on God's will and way, you'll be blessed in incredible ways in your life. 
Now, Jesus said, I'm the light of the world, so we got to keep focused on him and follow him. And Jesus also said, if you love me, obey my commandments. And if you obey my commandments, I will ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate who will never leave you, the Holy Spirit who leads in all truth. Jesus was saying, if we'll just listen to him and obey him, he'll give us the direction, power, provision of the Holy Spirit, and we will live the most blessed of lives. That's why the Bible says, you must do you must not just listen to God's Word. You've got to do what it says. And when we do what it says, we experience God's best in our lives. And then the fourth thing, to discover God's direction for our lives, we need to focus on being the Lord's priest and being a holy nation. I said in the beginning of this message that God had great plans for the Israelites. And he told them straight out through this message, he instructed Moses to give them. The Lord said again in Exodus 19, 6, And you will be my kingdom of priests, my holy nation, This is the message you must give to the people of Israel. Here's what God was saying to the Israelite people. I've called you to be a special people, and I've given to you a special purpose. I want to bless you. I want to reward you. I want to do great and mighty things in and for your life so I can do great and mighty things through your life to bless the people of the world. He said, first of all, I've called you to be a special people. Now, let me ask you, do you know know that you are special to the Lord? I was uh, thinking of a boy one time who grew up in a Christian family, and his family asked him to pray over the dinner. Sometimes you ask children to pray. They can pray a long time, and he prayed a long time. He thanked God for the food. He thanked God for his parents. He thanked God for his brother and sister. He thanked God for the dog and the cat, and he went on and on. As he concluded his prayer, he said, Lord, I want to thank you for the special little boy you have given to this family. Well, after the prayer, the mother couldn't help. She asked She said, "Uh, what special little boy were you talking about? He said, me, I'm talking about you. I'm special to the Lord and to this family. I want you to know that just as the Israelites were special to the Lord, if you're a follower of Jesus Christ, that you are special to the Lord. And just like God had a great purpose and plan for the Israelite nation, he has great purposes and plans for you. He wanted the Israelites to be a kingdom, a priest, to bless the world and display his salvation and power to the world. And he wants the same for us as well. The Lord said to them in Exodus 34, this is a covenant I'm going to make with you. I'll perform wonders that have never been done before. And all the people around you will see the power of the Lord, the awesome power I will display through you. I want to tell you what God said to the Israelite people in that day. He wants to say to his people in our day. You just stay close to me. You obey me. You love me. You live for me. And I'm going to do wonders and miracles through you that the world has never even seen. Now, as the Lord's priest and holy nation, there's some things we have to be involved in. We have to be involved in being examples to the world. Jesus said, uh, you are the light of the world, like a city on a hilltop that cannot be hidden. He went on to say, let your good deeds shine out for all to see so that everyone will praise your heavenly Father. So every day when you leave your house and every day when you go to work or you go to school, you got to remind yourself, I, I'm to be an example of, of the Lord to other people so they'll see the glory and might and goodness of the Lord in my life. As the Lord's priest and holy nation, we should be involved in serving others. It says in 1 Peter chapter 4, verse 10, God has given each of you a gift from this great variety of spiritual gifts. Use him to serve one another. In other words, those gifts and talents and personality that you have, those are blessings from the Lord. He doesn't just want you to use them to bless yourself. He wants you to use them to serve others. And by the way, you can learn how to better serve others by getting involved in our First Steps class here at Celebration Church. As the Lord's priest in the Holy Nation, we should be involved also in sharing our faith with others. The Apostle Paul said, The most important thing is that I complete my mission, the work that God gave me to tell people the good news about God's grace. So let me ask you, are you involved in sharing your faith with others? That's a part of what God's called you to do and called you to be. He's called you to be involved in being a good example for him. He's called you to be involved in serving others, but he's also called you to be involved in sharing your faith because if people don't learn from you about who God is and what God has done, how God can transform their life, they may never become a follower of Jesus Christ. I heard about an artist one time who painted a very vivid portrait. The portrait was about a ship that was going down in the sea, like the Titanic. Imagine the Titanic. And people had jumped off of the sinking ship, and they were in the sea around the ship. Not far from the ship, there was a big rock jutting up out of the ocean, and and clinging to the rock with both hands was a man just clinging to the rock to save his life. People commented on the portrait and said, man, this is awesome work. It's so vivid. It's so, uh, so uh, heart-provoking. But the author wasn't satisfied with the painting. He actually took his scissors and he ripped up the painting and repainted the scene. Here's what he did. He painted again a picture of a ship going down in the ocean. 
And around that ship in the ocean, there were people who had leaped off the ship to try to save their lives. And not far from the ship, there was a rock jutting up from the ocean. And, and, atta- and clinging to that rock, well, there was one man like it had been in the previous portrait. But this time, instead of clinging to the rock with, one hand, with both hands, the man was clinging to the rock with one hand and reaching out with the other hand to save someone from drowning. And when I heard that story, I thought, that's what the Christian life is all about. It's about clinging to the rock who is Jesus Christ and then reaching out to share our faith with others to help other people who are drowning in the sins and the waves of the world to find salvation and freedom and victory through the Lord Jesus Christ. And by the way, I've discovered that the more I share my faith with others, the stronger I become in my relationship with the Lord. Billy Graham said our faith becomes stronger as we express that a growing faith is a sharing faith. Let me just also encourage you. And next weekend, we're going to be having a Bring a Friend weekend at Celebration Church. And, and it's a good time to invite your friends to come and, and, and join in with our services, our online services or in-person services. Because here's the thing, as you share your faith with others, uh, God's going to use you in great and mighty ways. And then as the Lord's priest and holy nation, we should be involved in discipling others. Discipling others is simply helping other people to grow in their knowledge of the Word of God, of the Son of God, of the Spirit of God so they can become everything God's called them to be, so they can find and fulfill the great vision and plans God has for them in their lives. Jesus said to his early disciples, go and make other disciples, teach these new disciples to obey all the commands I've given to you. And there's a lot of things I could say about this idea of discipling others, but uh, last week we talked, encouraged you to get involved in a life group because in life groups, that's where people have the opportunity to be discipled by others and to disciple others as well. If you want to know more about life groups, let us know it online at celebrationchurch.org. Let me close out today's sermon. The Bible says, After the Israelites committed themselves to the Lord and to following his vision for their lives, God revealed himself to them in a new and powerful way. It says in Exodus 19.10 and then verses 16 and 17, The Lord told Moses, Go down and prepare the people for my arrival. Consecrate them today and tomorrow and have them wash their clothing. And then on the morning of the third day, thunder roared and lightning flashed and a dense cloud came down on the mountain. There was a long, loud blast from a ram's horn. And all the people trembled at this awesome display of God's presence. And then Moses led them out from the camp to meet with God. And they stood at the foot of the mountain, ready to receive God's word and to know about more about God's purposes and plans for their lives. What a tremendous day that was. And we know that God was preparing them to receive the Ten Commandments and to other laws and guidelines he has for their lives. Next weekend, we're going to begin studying about the Ten Commandments, but here's what I want you to know. When you're focused on the Lord, when you're focused on worshiping him publicly and privately, when you're focused on remembering who God is to you and what God has done for you, when you're focused on obeying the ways of the Lord, obeying and living by his word, when you're focused on being the Lord's priest in a holy nation, I mean, that's when God is preparing to lift you to a new level in your relationship with him, in your impact upon the world. And that's when you can begin to fulfill the great dreams and plans and visions that God has for your life. You know, this has been a crazy time during this pandemic time that we've been going through. I've had pastors say to me, as well as people, other people, Pastor Dennis, you don't seem to be so overwhelmed, overcome by what you see happening around you. No, that's because I've been there before. I've seen great traumatic times before. Uh, after Hurricane Katrina in 2005, uh, our, our city, 80% of our city was underwater. Our two campuses we had at that time were both flooded by the waters of Katrina. 60% of our people were dispersed to other cities and nations, uh, city, cities and states. Uh, and we had to start all over again as a church. But, but, but God spoke to me in a worship service. He spoke to me in a worship service and said, what, don't be overwhelmed by what has happened. But I want to do greater and mightier things in the days ahead than you've ever experienced or ever envisioned. And what God said to me that day came through in our church. And our church rebounded and our church grew. And our church began to have an incredible impact upon the city of New Orleans and upon the world. And here's what I want to remind you. The same God who worked mightily and miraculously in the lives of the Israelites in that day. And the same God who worked mightily and miraculously in the, celebration, the life of Celebration Church following Hurricane Katrina still has greater plans and purposes for your life and our church and other people's lives in the days ahead. We just got to be focused on worshiping him. We got to be focused on remembering who he is and what he's done. We got to be focused on obeying and living by his word. We got to be focused on becoming the holy priest and the holy nation he's called us to be. And then we'll see God work in greater ways in and for and through our lives than we've ever experienced or ever envisioned. 
I want you to bow your head with me right now. Heads are bowed and eyes are closed. I want to ask you again. Do you have any great purposes and plans? Do you have a great vision and dream for your life? And if so, what is your vision and dream for your life? Again, we would like to hear back from you at online at celebrationchurch.org. You communicate to us so we can pray with you about the dreams and plans and vision you have for your life. I don't know what those dreams and plans and visions may be, but here's what I know. No matter what dreams and visions we have for our life, they become bigger and grander and greater when Jesus Christ is the Savior and Lord of our lives. And Jesus becomes the Lord of our lives when we ask him to come into our life and then from time to time when we renew our commitment to him. I want you to bow your head with me right now, wherever you are, in your home or in an office or wherever you are, I want you to bow with me. And I want you to pray with me today to receive Jesus as the Savior, Lord of your life, or renew your commitment to him. So what do I pray? Just pray these words and really mean them. Pray, dear Lord Jesus, I believe you're the Son of God and the Savior of the world. And today I'm asking you, to become the Savior and Lord and Master of my life. Help me to know about the dreams and plans and purposes that you have for my life because they're bigger and grander than the ones I have for my life. Help me to know that you've forgiven me in my sins. Help me to know that you're working right now in my life. Help me to sense your presence and power, your peace, your love and joy. And help me to know your will so I can do your will today, tomorrow, and in the days ahead. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. Pastor Dennis kicked off the sermon today by asking the question, do you have a dream or a vision for your life? And no matter what the answer is to that, today provided some really practical tips for you to find out what that dream, vision, or God-given calling is for you. Really want to encourage you, webcc.info, click on the sermon links tab and use these notes to study this week as we learn what our God-given calling, what our dreams are, what our visions are that God has given to us. Hey, look, if you want to get baptized, if you want to join a life group, email me online at Celebration Church. Org. We'd love to connect with you. We've had several individuals connect with us this past week that we've been able to connect to those two things. If you made a decision today, webcc.info, click on the Make a Decision tab. Let us know what decision you made so that we can connect with you. Guys, I hope you have an incredible week. I want to encourage you to share this message uh, on whatever social platform that you're watching it on because you know and I know someone needs to hear this message. I hope you have a great week, and I hope I get to see you next week at Celebration Online.